the crazy outrage that has been sparked against uh, LGBTQ and uh, sexual minorities. Did you know homosexuality and gender diversity has always existed in Ghana? Despite the misinformation, bullying and religious dogma that politicians and religious leaders will have you believe, gay, trans and non-binary people lived and coexisted peacefully in Ghana long before colonialism. In fact, there are records that date as far back as 1590 that shows queer people living in Ghana and Africa. In this episode, we document queerness among some major ethnicities in Ghana. The Fantis. The Fantis live mainly in central and western Ghana and queerness within their traditions have been extensively documented. The Fantis believed that people's souls had weight and women with heavy souls were attracted to other women while men with lighter souls were attracted to men. Women were freely allowed to marry other women as well as men were allowed to marry men. The Inzimas The Inzima can be found in southwestern part of Ghana as well as southeastern part of Ivory Coast. Queerness within the Inzimas has been one of the most documented. This was because homosexuality and homosexual customs were still practiced even after Ghana's independence. The Agonwole Ajali was a marriage between same-sex couples, especially women. These marriages were not only accepted within their communities, but same-sex couples also observed all forms of social conventions, including bride price, traditional weddings, and child adoption just like married heterosexuals. The Asantes There was much diversity amongst the Asantes. Records that go back to the 18th and 19th century shows that male slaves could be courted and serve as concubines for their masters. This was considered a great privilege and an elevation from slavehood and these slaves were called Sasu, meaning a partner. They were beheaded and buried with their masters when their masters died. Another instance of homosexuality within the Ashanti was the Jigile Keton, a custom where older boys penetrated younger ones as a rite of passage. The Gars. The Gar is an ethnic group that live in the western Accra Coastlands. The Ghana community is probably one of the most queer-friendly communities and also one whose culture, especially queer-centered customs, has been preserved till date. The Ghana supreme deity of worship is one that embraces both genders. Ata Na Yumi a god that is both, a mother and a father, man and woman in the same person. The priests and priestesses have also been documented and are known to marry and take sexual same-sex partners. Again, it is debated but often suggested that the term supi which is used in Ghana to describe homoerotic relationships among women was derived from the Gyeong language. Denankani Denankani, a tribe in northern Ghana, also have several documented histories of socially accepted homosexual relationships. In 2012, an anthropologist, Rosemary Amengo, documented same-sex female marriages among the Nankani. These marriages were performed to ensure continuity of family inheritance and lineages. Actually, I'm not so the idea that LGBTQ and queerness is a foreign import is false and should be disregarded. Diverse cultures exist and have always existed in Ghana. 
different cultures were able to thrive because people accepted others for who they are. On the contrary, it is colonization and Abrahamic religions that imported homophobia to Africa and Ghana. Queer people have always existed in Ghana and will always exist. And if you think queerness is not our culture, then you do not know your culture. Your driver could be LGBTQ Your tailor could